us continue to worship Him. Yeah. Let's worship Him. For He's worthy of our worship. Let's worship Him. Because we have the victory. Let's worship Him. Because He lives today. He's not dead, He lives. How do we know He lives? Because He lives in our souls. Let us worship Him. Worship him. Let us worship him as we stand. He wanted all for us. We didn't have to fight. We didn't have to hang and die. and his mercy that has allowed us to see 10 months go out. And here we are on the fifth day of November. Nothing but God's grace. Nothing but his mercy. And for that we tell him thank you. I want to thank those of you who were with us on yesterday at Black Rock Church as our annual session again. It's my, my duty to uh, deliver the Congress of Christian Education message. Thank you for your presence and your prayers as you and your, we, we just say thank you for being there for us on yesterday. Amen. And we ask that you will continue to pray for us as we continue to do what God has assigned our hands to do. Amen. Thank those of you who have given, who have brought uh, canned goods to Bond the lady out of jail. Thank you. Amen. We are living in a season and a time 
where it's a needed time. Yes. Amen. And I declare when we are up, we ought to do all we can to help because we don't know when we might be on the receiving end. Amen. 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 So while you can, be a blessing to someone else. Amen. And it's amazing that these times of the year, Thanksgiving and Christmas, seems like the most needful times, but I contend that every day is a needful time for somebody. Amen. So let us, while we have the chance, let us always be a blessing. And thank you, Mount Pleasant, for being so obedient, so obedient to the call that was made. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our announcements and we're going to move in our worship experience. Amen. giving time. Amen. It's giving time. We come today to bring to God what God has, has allowed us to receive. He's given us the strength. He's given us the job. He pricked the heart and minds of those employers to hire us and those of us who those of you who have been able to retire. God is still blessing you. Amen. Amen. So we come at this time as we get ready to stand to be obedient and be cheerful in our giving. Amen. Because you can't be God giving. Amen. No matter how hard you try. Amen. The more you give to him, the more he's going to give back to you. Amen. So just keep on giving and watch God do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask or think. Let us stand. This is going to ask Brother Crockett to lead us in our offertory prayer. Father, we come to you. 
coming to you, Lord, for a time. Thanking you for life, health, and strength. Thanking you for grace and mercy. Father, we come today <clears throat> celebrating you today, Father. Celebrating your, your blood and your body. We thank you for protecting us, providing for us, giving us strength, and giving us understanding. And we thank you, Father, for just being you, just being our all in all. And bless each and everyone that comes in front of the field today to support your house, Lord. Yes, yes. And bless them in a mighty way. Yes. We ask all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
just know what I'm saying. One means a lot. Amen. In the kingdom of God. Amen. Congratulations to you guys. Yeah, even though like I said, didn't have the best season this year, did it? But see, you gave it your best. Amen. See, that's what it is. We can't be moved by what everybody else is doing. That's right. We do our best and God will see you. Amen. <laughs> and he will send someone to see you. Amen. He'll raise you up. Don't be doing like everybody. Well, we ain't winning. So, <laughs> you know, that's how sometimes the sin, Satan will trick you. God has set you up with a blessing, but you conformed to everybody else instead of staying your course. Well, baby, you stayed your course. Amen. Amen. And God saw you. Hallelujah. So, so proud of you. All right, this morning, this is just you and me, Tristan. <laughs> We're going to talk about the God who changes not. The God who changes not. And our scripture is coming from Malachi 3 and 6. And it says, I am the Lord, and I change not. Hebrews 13 and 8, and it says, Jesus Christ is, this is the Amplified Version, eternally changeless, always. The same yesterday, today, and forever. And in the New Living Translation, that verse says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. See, it's a good thing that amidst all the changes of life, there's one who change does not fail. One whose heart can never be altered. Everything else has changed. All things have changed. It is, is it still the year 2000, Tristan? It is the year 2000. Oh, 2000. <laughs> Just now, what you talking about? I wasn't even born then. What you asking? <laughs> Has the function and the appearance of, of our cell phones changed? That changed. How about um, uh, our uh, our televisions? Are they the same? These things talk to you now, and you can talk to them. You know, <laughs> and FaceTime. You can FaceTime on it. You can actually see somebody on it. You know, back in our day, when you said FaceTime, it was like we were gonna spend some time together FaceTime. <laughs> But now that's a whole other definition. So how do you guys listen to music? Has that changed? Yeah, we used to have a radio or something like that or a track. Oh, y'all know that. <laughs> and we were talking about that. We had moved up and we had the cassette. We had, went to the, and the CDs. Oh, my, my, my. We had really moved forward. Now these children have headsets on. You don't see anything else. There's music coming out of these headsets. Right. That, that, it doesn't have to. Doesn't have to be connected to the phone all the time. That, that's what I thought. I was like, I have a phone all the time. Why am I hearing music come out of this? Thing? So even the headsets now are, you know, they themselves can bring forth the music. So everything is changing. How about your video game? When you were younger, let's say ten, were you playing the same kind of video games you play now? No. Those things have changed. So everything around you has changed. How about you? Have you changed? How have you changed? Man, give me some. I can see you changing. You, know, you, just, <laughs> you tell me how you think you change. Taller. You're not just taller. Taller. What else? Shorter. Stronger. Yeah, I can say, yeah, there's some muscles in there. Now. Yes, you got stronger. Yes, yes, yes. How about your hair? Do you wear your hair the same way? You don't wear your hair the same way? How about, do you still know the things that you knew? You don't know any more than you knew when you were in fifth grade? A whole lot more. You've gotten, you've learned more complex subjects and you've been taught more. And, how about your mind? Do you have the same mindset? You mature. You grow. So you have changed. Is change a bad thing? Always a bad thing? No. No. Change is a good thing. Because if we as human beings don't change, there's something wrong. You still on the pacifier zone. 
Yeah. Your baby, y'all need to go get some help. And he's 21. There's something wrong. I know mama love it, but it's still. We need to get some help. And all of us have changed. Women, our hair color and um, hair shapes, hairstyles change with the wind. Some of us have gotten fatter. Few of us skinnier. Um, most of us have gotten hopefully wiser. Right. So there's change. There's change around us. You see, we live in a world that is constantly changing. People change. The weather changes. Season changes. Knowledge changes. Nothing ever seems to stay the same. In a world that is constantly changing, it'd be nice if there was at least one thing that we could count on to stay sane when everything around us is changing. Where there's something that never changes. And the Bible says, tells us that something is a someone. Mm -hmm. And his name is Jesus Come Christ. On. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He was loved yesterday, he's loved today. He was savior yesterday, he was savior today. He was almighty yesterday, he's almighty today. He was good yesterday, he's good today. He was righteous yesterday, he's righteous today. He was true and the way, death and the life. Yesterday, he's true, the way and the life today. He was just yesterday. Mm -hmm. He's just today. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Does his word change for, was he the word yesterday? Mm -hmm. He's the word today. So does his word change for us just because we live in, we're no longer living in 2000. We're living in 2023. Well, for the new say that it, had, it is, you know, this is right and this is wrong and this is wrong and right and everything. The news say isn't the news true? Huh? You tell me the news isn't true? I thought the news was true. You turn to one channel, you get one version. Turn to another channel. Another channel, you get another version. If it comes out of California you and it's on TV and it's moving, it's not true. What? They gotta put it on TV? They do. Because they gotta be Jesus. See. Everything's changed. And it's not always good. Some change is good when we turn our lives over to Christ. It's going for us to grow and mature and use the gifts that God has put in us as we grow, as we mature. But some things in the world, most things now in the world, are not good. And they have changed not for the best, but for the worst. So you have to, you can't look to the news, you can't look to social media, you can't list, look to movies, you can't look to your peers. You got to look to Christ Amen. for what is should be the same yesterday, today, and we have more. You see, when we have to stand before him, he's not gonna listen to, well, you know, that was back in Bible days, Jesus. <laughs> Or that was in 2000, or you know that was when my, my my parents, you know. But the culture said, you know, the law said, come on, I can do it like this. But Jesus said, I'm the word. Yeah. I set the standards of life. Right. I made you, I formed you, and I determined what's right and what's wrong. So what I want you to understand, baby. When everybody else is telling you to do it, baby, do it like you do it. <clears throat> you stay steadfast to what you know is right, what is in you. Because you're a young man with great integrity. I see it. My spirit sense it. Stay in that path of integrity. Right. Stay with what's right. That's right. No matter what the world is doing. Right. Because God sees you. So don't change who you are because everybody else is changing who they are. Stay where you're at with Jesus because in his hands, it's perfect and it's prosperous and it's a future. He'll keep you from the world of strong. <laughs> What the movie is, they, whatever the laws, I don't care what they say. Stay, 
everything unchangeable. He's immutable. Pray for these children. Father God in heaven, thank you for your word. To let us know when time is to do not change. Help our children who have been bombarded with a world that says they must change and become as the world is, even though they've been taught in their homes the truth and they know of Jesus. Help them not just to know about Jesus, but to know Jesus. And help them know that you are an anchor for their very life. You are people who are being tossed to the world. Lord, strengthen our children as they walk into this world 2023 and beyond. Surround them with the truth when the lies are screaming at them. Help them to be steadfast, unmoving, always alive. And the God who changes you. The God who is the same yesterday. Amen. We ask these things in your own name. In Jesus' name, amen. And let the church say amen. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Our scripture today is coming from 1 Corinthians 16, the 16th chapter, verses 5 through 15. And I'm reading in the New Living Translation. It reads as follows. I am coming to visit you after I have been to Macedonia, for I am planning to travel through Macedonia. Perhaps I will stay a while with you, possibly all winter, and then you can send me on my way to my next destination. This time I don't want to make just a short visit and then go right on. I want to come and stay a while, if the Lord will let me. In the meantime, I will be staying here in Ephesus until the festival of Pentecost. There's a wide open door for a great work here, although many oppose me. When Timothy, when Timothy comes, don't intimidate him. He is doing the Lord's work just as I am. Don't let anyone treat him with contempt. Send him on his way with your blessings when he returns to me. I expect him to come with the other believers. Now, about our brother Paul. I urged him to visit you with the other believers, but he was not willing to go right now. He will see you later when he has the opportunity. Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. And do everything with love. You know that Stephanus and his household were first were the first of the harvest of believers in Greece. And they are spending their lives in service to God's people. I urge you, dear brothers and sisters. Thus I have read 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 5 through 15. Amen. Amen.
praise. Let us worship Him. In the morning, the sound of worship. Even when he 
doesn't give us that car that we want. He still do. Doesn't give us that house or that job we want. He still do. Why is he good? Because many times he doesn't give it to us because he got something better for us. Thank God for what he didn't allow to happen to us. What he didn't give us, we need to thank him for. effort of us to be on watch for the enemy. Amen. Amen. He, he charges them also to stand firm in their faith. He wants them to stand on what they believe. Now in standing on what you believe you got to know what you believe. Uh, he didn't want them to allow false teachers and false doctrines to sway them from the word of God. Paul wants the Corinthians to be courageous people. He wanted them to stand for something so they wouldn't fall for anything. <laughs> he didn't want them to be pushovers. Uh, he charges them also to be strong in the will, the way, the word, and the witness of the Lord. 
So we need to stand strong against the tricks and the traps of Satan. But we can't be strong in our own strength. We got to be strong in the Lord's strength. Yeah. Uh, you can't fight Satan in your own strength. You lose every time. Yeah. The last charge he gives us is for the people to show love. Love is the key to things getting better and being better in the world. We talk love, but we don't show love. <laughs> love is an action word. Yes. It's time to show more and talk less. Yes. InspirationalQuotes.com says, love is shown in your deeds, not in your words. <laughs> PictureQuotes.com says, if you love someone, show it. Love is not a noun to be defined, but a verb to be acted out. Yes. There's so much hatred in our world. Yes. Sad commentary of the matter is we see so much hatred amongst the body of Christ. There's so much disdain and contempt for people for a myriad of reasons. All of us are God's children by creation. We're living in a day where people don't need a reason to hate you. They hate you because they can hate you. They hate you because of what they've heard. But the time is now that if things are going to get better, if the government is going to get better, if families are going to get along, if there's going to be cooperation among world leaders and countries, if there's going to be harmony and unity in the church, love must be at the forefront. Yes. Uh, we must show love. We must be the leaders and not the followers. This illustration of love taken from Zoda Hate's illustration of Bible truths lays it out this way. There was a class of little girls who were learning to spell. They spelled a number of small words such as pig, cat, dog, cow and amuse themselves by imitating the sounds that these animals make. Then little Mary was asked to spell love. She didn't stop to give the letters but ran and threw her arms around the teacher's neck and kissed her on the neck and kissed her on the cheek. We spell love that way in our house. She said, the girls laughed but the teacher said that is a beautiful way but do you know another way to spell love? Oh yes, cried Mary, I spell love this way. And she began to put the books in order on her teacher's desk. She says, I spell love by helping somebody when they need me. Uh, that's, 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 the, that's the idea, that's, that's the gesture. Those are the actions that we need in a day and a time like this. And things have not changed from Paul's time. We need to show love. We are, we are watching, we are standing firm, we are being courageous and we're strong means nothing without love. Uh, Paul wants people to live and do all that they do in love. It's difficult to be all God wants us to be without the love of God in your heart. Love has everything to do with who we are and whose we are. We serve and worship God who is love. It's essential that we not minimize the power of love. It's paramount that we recognize that from Genesis to Revelation, we see the power, the presence, and the provision of love. It's troubling to see God's people who profess that we love him and can't do without him, yet we show no love to our brothers and our sisters. For it is love that is the mark that identifies us from the rest of the world. Uh, if there's nothing else, people ought to know that we are children of the Most High God. Yes. For as God's people, we are the example of what love should be about and look like. We are the example of showing love. For John 13, 34, and 35, Jesus says, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this, 
See, yeah. all men know that ye are my disciples, yeah. if ye have love one to another. For well, it was earlier in this chapter, in this 13th chapter of, of John, that we discussed in Bible study this past week, that Jesus had showed the power of love and serving. He showed them how much he loved them by serving them. He got up from a table. He and went into a servant mode. Here was the king of the Jews, the savior of the world, the only begotten son of God. Here was God in the flesh who got up from the table and washed some dirty, dusty feet of his disciples. We're talking about a king, y'all. We're talking about the savior who got up and did a menial and messy task to show his, his disciples love and servanthood. Yeah. I'm talking about the king of the Jews. Yeah. I'm talking about our savior. He displayed love. He was thinking of others even though he was getting ready to encounter death. Yeah. Uh, that's what love does. Uh, and that's what it is. It thinks of someone else. Yeah. Love is selfless. Love is not looking for reciprocation. Jesus was not washing those feet for them to wash his feet. And love is looking to make things better. So as I get ready to close this morning, it was Dr. Tony Evans who tells the story about how people would know love and who loves. He says that designer clothes are known by their trademarks or their designs. Yeah. You can know if it's a Tommy Hill figure or a Ralph Lauren. Uh -huh. they, they have trademarks that make them very visible and very identified. Yeah. Those who hold an office or a unique kind can be identified by their attire. You can know a doctor by his or her attire. You can know a police officer by his or her attire. You can know a judge by his or her attire. Yeah. But God has sent forth something as irrefutable evidence that we are close to God. Yeah. An irrefutable test by which we can measure your own spiritual growth. Yeah. In fact, so awesome is this trademark of God that he said it would be the major declaration of your faith. Yeah. Jesus put it this way, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, yeah. that you love ye one another. Yeah. So as we embark upon this seasons of Thanksgiving and Christmas, yeah. we see love shown so often. But let's not stop at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Let's not wait until then to show love. But show love daily. For we serve and worship God who loves us unconditionally. Yeah. Every day of our lives. Yeah. He blesses us. He keeps us. Yeah. He provides for us. Yeah. He protects us. Yeah. Even though we don't always love him back. Yeah. But it was John 3.16 that gives us the greatest example of love. For God so loved the world yeah. that he gave his only begotten son. Yeah. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. Show love. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, and verse 13, the message. This is how he shows love. If I give everything I own to the poor yeah. and even go to the state to be burned uh -huh. as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. Yeah. So no matter what I say, no matter what I believe and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Yeah. For this is love showing itself. Love never gives up. Yeah. Love cares more for others than for self. Yeah. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Yeah. Love doesn't strut. It doesn't have a sway on head. Yeah. Doesn't force itself on others. It isn't always me first. Yeah. Doesn't fly off the handle. Doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Yeah. Doesn't revel when others grow. Doesn't yeah. pleasure in the flowering of truth. Yeah. Puts up with everything. Yeah. Trust God always. Yeah. Always looks for the best. Yeah. Never looks back but keeps on going to the end. Yeah. But for right now, yeah. 
until that completeness, we have three things do to lead us toward consummation. Trust steadily in God. Yeah. Hope unswervingly and love extravagantly. And the best of all of these three is love. Yeah. So what we need to do is show love in all things. Yeah. Love them when they don't love you. Yeah. Love them when they mistreat you. Yeah. Love them in spite of them not doing for you. Yeah. Just show love. Show love. We are living in a day and a time where we need to show love to our enemies. I think Paul says if you would be heaping coals of fire on their heads. But instead of showing love, we want to get evil. But wasn't it not Jesus, or wasn't it not Paul said, vengeance is mine? God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Let God deal with them. He can deal with them better than you can ever think about dealing with them. Because when he deals with them, they're not coming back on you. Amen. 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 So let us show love. If anybody ought to be showing love, it ought to be God's people. Amen. Amen. But as I was coming down the road today, I was listening to a pastor, and he said, you can't tell the church from the world. Amen. 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 You can't tell the church from the world. He says, we are called to be leaders, not followers. We should be leading the world, not the world leading us. So if some love is going to be shown, then we as the body of Christ must be the ones who show love. Is there one? As we get ready to extend the invitation, because it is love that is what is going to get us into the kingdom. It was love that Jesus had for us. That first of all, God had for us. That he sent his son. That his son loved us enough that he gave his life. That we might have a right to the tree of life. He showed love. If we say we are his disciples and we are his children. We are to do like our father does. And show love. In everything that we do. Show them. Is there one? As we stand today, extend the invitation. Is there one who desires to experience some of this love that we are talking about? He will love you unconditionally. God doesn't love you today and hate you tomorrow. He loves you every day matters not what you do he still loves you and you want somebody on your side you want somebody like this in your life those of you who don't know Jesus who desire to be a candidate for baptism come on so you can experience some of this love is there no is there one we offer him today What he give you. He can give you more than the world can ever think about giving. Come on to Christ. Come on. Is there another? Is there another? Candidate for baptism. Christian experience all about level. We extend this invitation to you.
Jesus is standing waiting. He has no respect of person. Matters not what you've done and what you are doing. He's able to forgive you for all of your sins. And he forgives you. He forgets about it. He doesn't keep bringing them up like we as humans do. He don't talk about what you used to do. Come on, that's all he asks you to do. You come, he'll do the rest. Come to him, he'll do the rest. That's all he asks you to do is to come to him. Admit, believe, and confess. He'll do the rest.
because we are living in a day, Father, where if anybody needs to be showing love, it is we as your people. And Father, until we show more love, Father, things are not going to be like you would have them to be. So Father, we pray today that you will convince and convict us that love is the way. That love is the only way. So Father, instead of us talking a lot, help us to be a people of action. We talk long enough. It's time to put some action behind our words. So we pray that we would do just that today. Father, we pray for Israel and Gaza and all those who are involved. And we pray for Prime Minister Netanyahu. Speak to his heart, Father. President Biden has tried to reason with him. But Father, you speak to his heart. You trouble his heart. Stir his heart, upset his heart. Father, that he will do that which President Biden has asked of him to do. And Lord, remember Hamas, Father, who's calling all of this. Change their hearts and their minds as well, Father. Speak to them as only you can. For Father, you're the only one who can change hearts and minds. We can talk and we can pray, but you're the only one who can go in and change their hearts and change their minds. Lord, we pray today, Tuesday's election day across this country. We pray that your, we know your will is going to be done. And we pray, Father, that those of us as your people, Father, that we will exercise the right that has been given us. And Father, there are those amongst us who are candidates, Father, and we pray that you will lead and guide them in the way that you will have them to be led and guided. That they will represent you in all that they do. Father, we realize and understand that there are those who are running against them, Father, who are not doing things in a God-like fashion. But Father, those of us who know you, help us to know that your way is the best way. So Father, have your way on Tuesday as it relates to our election. And then Lord, we pray for the youth, not only of Mount Pleasant, but we pray for youth every day. Because, Father, they, they leave home, go into school, and it, it's not certain that they're going to make it back home. But, Lord, we pray that you will cover them as only you can. That you will cover them at the bus stop. Cover them while they're riding the bus. Cover them as they're walking up and down the hallways. Cover them in the classroom. Cover them on the athletic fields. Cover them on their way back home, Father. Cover them as only you can. And Father, I pray that you will raise up some youth, Father, who will be able to convince and convict their peers that Jesus Christ is the way. Jesus Christ is the only way. Father, I pray that you will bless this house that you will heal this house, Father, in any matter of illness and disease. That you will heal this house of any sin, Father, that's, that's residing in this house. Father, that you will start from the, from the top at the pastor and move on down through the ranks of the congregation. Have your way, Father, with all of us. Do what you see needs to be done. Father, sometimes you got to sit some of us down, Father, in order that your program may move. Whatever it is, Father, I want your will to be done. Don't want to be a stumbling block or a hindrance to anybody. Matters not what title or rank we have, Father. You do what you see needs to be done. Because, Father, us at the end of the day that all of us are servants of the most high God. 
So, Father, have your way. I pray that you will bless the Sandy River Association this day. Have your way, Father. Not only this association, but associations everywhere because it's time for your people to get together. Because, Father, there's a dying world out there that needs to know that you are the one who's able to save us from all of our sins. So help us to put aside our differences. Help us to not worry about who gets the credit, Father, who gets the glory, and who gets the honor, because all of the glory and the honor goes to you. So have your way in this place. And Father, whatever we have come asking you for, we pray that you would give it to us according to your will and your way. And Father, we want to thank you for what you've already done for us. And we want to thank you for what you're doing right now because you're working in somebody's life right now. And we want to thank you for what you're going to do. In the marvelous, matchless, magnanimous name of Jesus the Christ, we pray and we say amen. 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 Let's go back. Sundays ago or so, it was, I, I shared with you there were two young ladies that were missing, one in Monroe, probably about 20 miles from where we live, and there was a cousin of mine that was missing. She's back home. Amen. Safe. Amen. Amen. She's safe. It was Wednesday or Thursday when her mother was on social media and said that she was safe. But she continues to ask for us to pray for her. So pray, continue to pray for Elijah English. Amen. And her family, Johnny and Gwen Collett. Continue to pray for them. Amen. I can only imagine. I've never had a child missing, but I can only imagine. Let us pray, y'all. It's so much going on in our world. Let us be careful. Let us we can't be too careful of our children. Amen. 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 We can't be too careful of our children. So let us continue to pray for the colleague family. Continue to pray for Elijah as she's back at home now. Amen. And let us pray for all of those who their, their loved ones are still missing. Don't know where they are. Let us continue to pray for them. Amen. Amen.